a dose escalation upward of retrotutite and then maintaining that dose for 48 weeks or longer and then tapering it down again promotes weight loss and that weight loss is then sustained. Now, since retrotutite is not FDA approved yet, it's not available as a pharmaceutical medication. Let's just stick with the clinical trials, albeit that many of the clinical trials are either not completed yet or still recruiting. And even for the completed clinical trials, in many cases, the results aren't posted. So I had to extrapolate that information from the publications, the studies which are available for free. So there might be some gaps here. I did my absolute best to summarize all of the clinical trials performed or being performed or going to be performed on retro to tight um, for this segment of the video. But if, again, if there's some gaps here, my sincere apology, um, we're literally in the middle of investigating this compound. And even though it is available through the Chinese peptide websites, um, it doesn't mean that the information at this point in time is absolutely complete and very conclusive. You can find the published results of four completed clinical trials down below in the YouTube comment section. Unfortunately, three of those studies are locked behind the paywall, but the three other ones are actually available for free as a full publication, one of which is actually a meta-analysis comparing retrodutite to the other GLP-1 receptor agonist medications. Well, we'll get into that study when we start comparing all of the GLP-1s and see which of the dosing protocols give you comparable results so you know how to transition from, let's say, terzepidite in a particular dose to retrodutite at the new and improved dosing protocol. Now, unfortunately, uh, the results of clinical trials performed on healthy individuals are nowhere to be found. So all we have to work with is uh, basically unhealthy people. The biggest clinical trial uh, looking to investigate the effects of retrodutite once weekly on cardiovascular outcomes and kidney outcomes in adults living with obesity, calling the TRIUMPH outcomes, has an enrollment estimate of about 10,000 people and should be completed in February 2029. So once that's completed, then you need a couple more years for those results to be published, and then uh, perhaps a couple more years for retrodutite actually becoming available as an FDA-approved medication. So hold your horses. It will be a while before this is FDA-approved, and for now we have to rely on the Chinese generic peptide websites to get our retrodutite in through the mail. So I was able to summarize all of the clinical trials, whether those are completed or not here in this segment. The investigated conditions regarding retrodutite are for general safety, tolerability and metabolism in healthy individuals. Those results are nowhere to be found. In postmenopausal obesity or regular obesity in men, obviously, with a body mass index between 27 to 50 kilograms per square meter. In the maintenance of weight loss in obesity, type two diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular disease, impaired renal function or chronic kidney disease, impaired liver function or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, knee osteoarthritis, and a pharmacokinetic comparison between a testing device and a standard reference device, seeing what administration route regarding PENS, for example, is the most efficacious. The investigated drug interactions between retrotutides are occurring with midazolam, warfarin, caffeine, ethanol, estradiol, uh, Trospironone, metoprolol, a beta blocker, glucophage, aka metformin, and various sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors. The investigated drug comparisons are happening between retroglutide and dulaglutide or retroglutide and semiglutide or retroglutide and terzepidide. The investigated enrollment size uh, overall between all clinical trials is 20,245. So by the time retrotutite hits the market and then it is approved as a medication, then the total sample size of people participating in clinical trials was over 20,000 people. For retrotutite, the investigated treatment duration is anywhere between 30 days up to two years and 12 weeks, where they basically see if a dose escalation upward of retrotutite and then maintaining that dose for 48 weeks or longer and then tapering it down again promotes weight loss and that weight loss is then sustained because they learned from the other clinical trials when liraglutide or dulaglutide or semaglutide or terzepidide are discontinued then the weight loss comes right back with a vengeance and these people end up fatter than they ever were before because their appetite is now so uh, ravenous that they can't control themselves and they went from 300 pounds to 200 pounds and then to 350 pounds, for example. That's kind of brutal that way. So 
tapering upwards, sustaining it for a year or longer, and then tapering downwards. Based on the clinical trial information, that seems to be the route going forward, or at least for people suffering from uh, type 2 diabetes or obesity. The investigated dosages are 0.5 milligrams, 1 milligram, 2 milligram, 4 milligram, 8 milligram, and up to 12 milligrams subcutaneous once weekly, and that's with or without weekly dose escalation. So you might start at half a milligram once weekly and then escalate all the way up to 12 milligrams once weekly. The administration route is always subcutaneous. The reported half-life is six days with an active life of approximately 48 days based on the pharmacol kinetics and dynamics of retrotutite published in scientific evidence. And these are the reported beneficial effects of retrotutite whenever they are available. Retrotutite decreases appetite, improves satiation, promotes weight loss, reduces waist circumference, reduces liver fat, improves the systolic and diastolic blood pressure, improves lipid parameters, improves fasting glucose levels, fasting insulin levels, and hemoglobin A1C levels. It improves homeostatic model assessment for insulin resistance, that's the HOMA2IR score, and might even cause full pre-diabetic reversion. And the commonly reported side effects are as follows. Anemia, clear cell renal cell carcinoma, acute kidney injury, acute cholecystitis, acute pancreatitis, increased resting heart rates and irregular heartbeats, mild to moderate gastrointestinal disorders, which is actually temporary. So as the dose of retrotutite is being escalated upwards, gastrointestinal upset and problems like nausea, diarrhea, or vomiting uh, are a little bit more common. But then as you sustain a particular dose of retrotutite, these uh, gastrointestinal problems seem to go away with time as you get used to this particular medication. And retrotutite is associated with fatigue, dizziness, headache, skin disorders, and might even increase your blood pressure, albeit that it's more common that it actually controls blood pressure. Now, keep in mind that all of these reported side effects are not among healthy individuals. I couldn't find those results. This is all stemming from people suffering from either obesity or type 2 diabetes or both. So if you associate with uh, or you can identify as being obese, uh, my body mass index is way too high, but that's from freakishly uh, amounts of muscle mass. I don't associate as somebody with a high uh, body mass index due to obesity, and I don't uh, associate myself as having type 2 diabetes. And uh, personally, from all of the retrotite experimentation that I've done, uh, none of these reported side effects seem to occur in healthy individuals who use retrotite to um, control their appetite and improve their weight loss by um, right improving their fat loss journey. And regarding the reported blood work parameter changes, besides the one we already mentioned regarding an improvement of blood glucose levels, fasting insulin levels, and hemoglobin A1C levels, retrodutite also increased creatine phosphokinase levels, amylase, lipase, and adiponectin levels, but decreased leptin levels. And regarding the safety profile, uh, retrotutite seems to be consistent and comparable with other incretin-based medications, whether those are solo GLP-1 receptor agonists or combination medications GLP-1 and GIP receptor agonists. So in that sense, um, retrotutite is reasonably comparable with the other medications, but we'll dive into that a little bit later on because I feel that those results are not um, as clear as the other FDA-approved medications because those have a longer trajectory of being used by general population. And when it's introduced in general population, you see that the side effects and the problematic effects uh, start to become more apparent. So since retrotutite is not FDA approved yet, and the total sample size, um, when all the clinical trials are completed, will be around 20,000 people, excluding all the people in the fitness community who have access to retrotutite through the peptide websites. The other incretin based medications have been used by millions. So you're comparing millions to 20,000 people, and I'm sure you can see the discrepancy regarding the side effects and the potential deleterious effects. I'm sure those will become more apparent with retrogetite when it finally hits the market a couple years from now. 